All right, Krenzel maintenance. This is one of the things that I think is gonna come up more and more commonly here uh, in the foreseeable future because um, we've sold thousands of these things now. Uh, this is my eight year old machine, roughly, eight, eight and a half years, something like that. It's never been serviced. The only thing I've ever done was change the oil. Uh, I've gone to Krenzel USA and kind of learned how to do this. So we're gonna fumble through this together and I'll show you uh, how to, I'm gonna show you how I do this. Uh, I wanna change the seals. Uh, so I have a seal kit. I wanna change the check valves uh, and uh, we'll take a look at the unloader, uh, but we may also change the unloader valve. And I know my gauge is good, but I'm um, gonna show you how to change the gauge if, uh, if need be, uh, if you needed to, to change the gauge, all sort of maintenance items. Uh, we'll have these in the store, in Obsessed Garage. Uh, we also have, I already have this in the store as of right now, but we'll have all this stuff up and available to you. Uh, but this is the Krenza Gear Oil. Uh, you could use 5W50 if you wanted to, um, but uh, like Mobile One Synthetic, uh, but this is actual gear oil designed specifically for this machine. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the hose reel. I'm gonna take off the cover, uh, which you don't technically need to remove the cover. I'm gonna remove it because uh, I found out, if you go back and watch my original oil changing video, um, all the other Krenzlas, the dipstick here just pops. Uh, for some reason, mine has coarser threads back whenever this generation was, you know, eight, nine years ago. Um, so I'm gonna mangle the crap out of it getting this thing off. So it's better for me to just take the cover off. So let's start, let's remove the hose reel just to give us better access. There are four Phillips screws. And then there's a single 17 millimeter that we need to remove here. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, yeah, this way. This is, no wonder this thing's never leaked. There we go, I'm going the wrong way. Not off to a good start. It's going to be interesting to see how much corrosion how much is done. So the recommendation of doing this stuff is at like a thousand hours, which I'm not even close. Uh, but I figure, one, I wanna show you how to do it. Two, one of the things that Krenzel highly recommends is that you don't wait until your machine stops working, that you maintain it. And that's the beauty of these machines. This is why you pay for this over something cheaper. This is all serviceable and all fixable, if you will. All right, so let's take the cover off so we can dump the oil. So there's four Phillips screws again. I don't know how many hours this machine has on it, but it's probably a few hundred, maybe. Hasn't been used the last few years since I've gotten the uh, wash bay. Oh, sorry, there's six. And I've mainly been hanging on to this for a while to uh, perform maintenance to it so that I could show you. All right, so let's start by taking off the dipstick. Now, the way to do this is just to get a big flathead and it'll just pop loose. Again, mine is super stiff. I don't know why. It's just this is an old, old machine, older machine. This is one of the first... 1122s when they transitioned from the 11, the 1120. But this once, I'm telling you, on yours, once you pop, once you uh, sort of break this free, it will, it will untwist by hand, just in mine, super tight. So the recommendation is to change the oil at 50 hours and then theoretically never again. I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend changing it, you know, once a year or so. You should get some towels. So that's what the dipstick looks like. And oil looks good. All right, you see on the bottom here, I should have shown you before I took the darn cap off. Let's, let's put this back on. This is gonna be a uh, real education on how not to, I'm sure by the end of this. But here's our drain plug. There we go. OK. 
Okay. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, it's time. So when you have this kind of frothy milkiness, it means that there's some water getting past the seals into the oil. So certainly time to, to update. So in here there's a magnet and that's what will catch any metal parts, particles. Okay, so now let's remove our limit switch. There's two flathead screws on the top. I'm not sure the procedure of exactly how to do this. So this will go very similarly to how it might go for you in your garage. Now, I don't think you really need to remove the limit switch, but I'm gonna remove it just because I wanna see what's doing in here. So we're gonna remove our gauge so we can get to our check valves. A lot of times if you find your gauge isn't working, so that maybe not a bad idea to take it off and then reseat it. And by the way, this is a glycerin gauge, so there's oil inside of here, glycerin type oil uh, that keeps the gauge from vibrating. So that's why you'll always see an air bubble. So this is a pretty good indicator that it's time to change the seal kit when you have the it's kind of milky white water in your oil. That means that the water's getting past the seals. Let's take all our check valves out first. That's what Josh did when, uh, when he showed us how to do this. So there are three inlet check valves and three outlet check valves. And this is the new check valve kit with new O-rings. Just take the middle one off first. <clears throat> I need to put that darn cap back in there. It's done draining now. Dang, it keeps draining out this funky white crap. Maybe we will open up the head of the pump and take a look at it. I'm gonna dump some more, more gear oil in there. Since you're gonna have a lot of excess oil anyway. You only need 0.3 liters, and this is a one liter bottle. So we'll just let that, let that chill there for a minute. And it'd be really cool if you had a parts washer. You could go throw the whole head of the pump in there, clean it out. Now there's an O-ring down to the bottom of this. We're gonna have to pull out. So really, I think that the two main maintenance items are gonna be the check valves and the seal kit. Take a pick. There's, well, there's one O-ring, I should say. And I'm gonna pop that out. This is kind of fun. It was more fun watching an expert do it, but kind of fun fumbling through it. All those look pretty decent. So I don't know that I really need to mess with the unloader, but I'll show you the basics of it's best to go watch the video, the hour long full deep dive series on, the, on that. I don't know that it matters, but I'm gonna keep these in, in order. It's pretty awesome though that this thing has never been touched. It still functions great. So I would probably, I mean, this is eight years old. If you're using it all the time, you know, I probably, if I was using this for so the last two years, last three, three years, I've been, uh, I've been using my wash bay instead of this. And so I would say I'd probably do this around, you know, around, depending on how much you're using it. You know, if you're using this professionally, like if you're a professional detailer and you're using this all the time, I would, I would probably do this, this maintenance process once every, you know, maybe every couple of years. Pull on 
Got these O-rings. For you guys that are using it in your home, you know, maybe, maybe after five years of use, go in, buy one of these check valve kits. So we got all those out. Now let's get our let's get to our seals. So we're going to take the head of the pump off. By I think these are seven millimeters, eight, eight millimeter. Remember the short bolts go in the bottom. This thing looks pretty darn good though. Doesn't look like there's any crazy amounts of wear or anything funky going on. scoring on our plungers so there's there's three plungers so the way this works there's a plate inside of there that wobbles and so each one kind of goes it goes goes in and out as the plate wobbles so the weight plate kind of goes like this and opens opens and closes the uh removes the pistons if you will and so just to keep this simple the smart thing to do would be to open up our seal kit and replace it as we take it out. So these are the brown, harder version. Notice the orientation, so the U shape is pointing out. Now I need to pull this off. So this is where the soft version goes. We have to pull this out and so the U shape or the open side goes in toward the outlet of the pump. So what we do and if you look at the instructions, the instructions will show us that X and the packet X is the one that goes on the pump, the pump head side. Now, there's a special tool that you need to put this in that we don't have. And so petroleum jelly is the recommended lubrication lubricant. So we just get a little bit of that on there. Remember, it goes slides inward. So first, let's just kind of wipe this out here with a towel. You know, it looks pretty clean in there. Make sure there's no O-rings or any pieces of parts left. Looks pretty good. So now let's see if I can get this to fit without the right tools. Shoot. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go watch Josh's video. <laughs> yeah, I can see where this is gonna become a problem. I thought the squishy ones, no, this is the harder one. So what he said to do was to use a big flathead screwdriver and work it in there. God dang, you made it look so easy. I knew this was gonna end up being hard. All right, let me figure this one out and I'll come back to you. All right, we got it. It's not as bad as I thought. I'll show you how, show you how I did it. Just to make sure you don't cut it. What I'm gonna do, take this, get some Vaseline on it, and I'm going to kind of ram it in there as much as I can sideways. I'm gonna take my flat head Kind of warp it into place. So notice I'm going on the side of it and just twisting it to get it to get over the ridge. It eventually kind of pops out, but eventually it pops into place. You just want to make sure that you don't rip it or cut into it. 
So again, they make a slide hammer type tool for this, but if you're gonna do this once in your life, I don't know that it makes sense to buy a $100 tool unless you're doing this for a living. So we're in. So again, I'm taking this on the side and just kind of twisting it into place. Nice. That's the hardest part of the whole deal. Now we take the other side. Let's take our bottom one here. We'll take could use a flathead here, but I'm gonna use a pick. Get the old O-ring off. New O-ring. Slide this over top. Like so. Make sure there's nothing inside here. Then we're gonna take our brown, slightly more pliable, pliable version. I'm gonna take the little insert piece. A little Vaseline on both. I'm going to take, and remember, the opening goes on the inside, pushes in. Then we take our final washer, which should make everything flush. Snap that in place, so everything should sit flush with the top. And then I take, pop it back in place. And so what this seal kit does is make sure that water only, the water doesn't feed back into the transmission housing where the oil, oil is. And make sure you take off your old ones, including the washer. Don't forget that. You don't want to end up having two, two washers in here to cause a problem. What do you think? Should we open up this housing here and see what's doing inside? It takes two seconds. Let's dump out our oil. This is way more fun than I thought it would be. Yeah, I say we open up the housing, clean out all that white gunk while we're in here. Same eight millimeter. This is not an eight millimeter, it's a six millimeter. What am I saying? If I remember correctly, there's nothing that, there's no seals or gaskets or anything when I remove this. So the main reason for me to open this up, I just wanted to clean it out. Just kind of inspect, everything looks pretty sharp. So that's our wobble plate right there. So when you get that milky white stuff, it's not the end of the world. It's the reason why you should change your oil periodically. Because we had some blow by, some water blow by into our transmission housing, which is why we ended up with some funk. And you can't really remove this stuff unless you have special tools. So we're not gonna pull this out, we're gonna leave it. But since it's only four bolts, why not open it up and give it a good cleaning? Gosh, everything looks like brand new working order. Doesn't look like there's any all these ball bearings look clean. So you can see how easy this is. I mean, anybody can do this. Now, when I was at Krenzel USA, they weren't too concerned about torque specs. If you just kind of give it a, give it a little, a little of the sauce, a nice little turn and you're good to go. Almost all these things have O-rings, so. Okay, let's put the head back on. I hope this is as easy as I think it is to put this back together. I think I'm sorry, I'm gonna put it back on upright like this. Nice. Now I feel good about my engine compartment being nice and clean inside. Let's lay this back down. That's back in place. 
So now we can take this guy, make sure all these look good. Everything looks nice and flush. Slide the pump head back in place. Now we've got new seals. We have new seals, fresh oil. It's an overall beautiful setup here. This should slide back nice and neatly. What did I say? The long ones are at the top, right? So I'm going to slide these guys back in, get them started. Yeah, I mean, when you're dealing with brass and aluminum, just use your better judgment on reinstalling things. Now, if I was going to keep this, I'd be detailing all this stuff, but apparently Jeff wants this thing, so he can clean it himself. We're just going to make sure it works. In fact, I'm not even all that excited about going to make sure it works. That means I need to go get an inlet hose out. Okay, so let's put our new check valves in. Here's our kit. These are all the same. Even though they're red, it's still the same thing. Nice and fresh. So we take our O-rings. I forget which ones Josh had to do first. I think he said we're supposed to do the bottom ones first. Actually, you know what? I think I can just put the O-ring and redo that. I think I can just slide the O-ring on the end of our check valve here. And that should push it into place. Yeah. Two, three. Gosh, this is way more fun than I thought it would be. Makes you feel real, like a real man. This is a 22 millimeter for our gauge. Take a look at our check valve here, make sure everything looks good while we're in here. I think it's bigger than 22, isn't it? It's 24. This is our, I forget what they call this. this is, I think this is like the main outlet check valve. There's a ball bearing inside of here, I believe. Just want to take a look. There's no, nothing in the seal kit. You would, you, this is actual a part that you could replace, but I don't think this is a part that fails. So then the ball bearing, make sure you pull that out. Just make sure there's no, no substantial wear. Make sure all your holes are unimpeded. Your O-ring's good. This is a, a part that is replaceable, but I think this is like a this is like a 20-year part here. So what we need to do is stand this up, get the bearing to seat in the right spot, and screw it back into place. Okay, so I'm not going to mess with the unloader. I'm not going to mess with the unloader or. So this is the unloader valve here, should be turned all the way in. Um, but the way the unloader works, you can, you know, we carry these, we stock these. But the way the unloader works, there's a jam nut behind here, inside of here, to set the depth. So if everything's working properly, we're gonna turn the thing on. As long as the gauge reads, it reads 1400 PSI, um, then there's no reason to adjust or mess with the unloader. Um, but what can happen is this tip can wear out over time. Um, but I know that this one doesn't have an issue, but that is another potential failure point. There's a check valve here and then the unloader as well. And so these two parts, um, if you have an issue, there shouldn't, there shouldn't be any real maintenance to those, um, unless you have an issue with the, uh, you know, pressure dropping, not being proper. Let's take our gauge. It 
should stop right, right in the center there. So it's nice and lined up. Looks good. Okay. So we should be good to put our oil back in the machine. Let's put our, this is our pressure switch back on. Just slide into place. Take our two screws, and there shouldn't be any maintenance to that either. It'd be really smart if you had a funnel, which I don't have the right size funnel for this here. Actually, you know what? I might have one over there. So shoot, if I did this again, it would take even less time. Make sure everything looks good. Okay, so now I've got a bottle here, so we need 300 milliliters of either 5W50 or you can buy the Krenzel gear oil from me. our makeshift funnel again. Point 0.3 liters is what you need. So you got a fresh oil change, fresh seal kit, fresh check valves. We should be good for another eight years. I really need to get a new Dipstick. Yours shouldn't have a problem tightening and untightening properly. Mine is the OG. OG. Okay, let's put our cover back on. We'll let Jeff clean it out himself and we'll test it out. And if I was keeping this, I would, uh, I'd be doing a full, full detail under the hood here and debadging. I'm surprised I still have the stickers on the side of this thing. How did I let that fly? A couple of things of note with the hose reel. One, there's a very specific, very, actually really amazing connection on the inside of this hose reel so for you to those of you who have been dreaming of swapping out for a different hose just not practical so you can see it takes a minute to change out the the hose reel or to take it off to get much better access gosh i love how German engineering is just freaking awesome. Make sure we get this back in place. There was a 20 there. And a 17 here. Make sure that's good. Another thing, last thing I'll mention here before we go fire up the machine. You want to go ahead and get one of these. Um, you know, for years I've been using a sort of a hybrid setup uh, where we had a twist and seal plug and then a stainless steel coupler on the end. Uh, so you want to also keep note of this O-ring here. So if you're gonna do this maintenance, this green O-ring, we sell these as well. I don't think it's like a dollar or something like that. Um, but you want to make sure that you're maintaining this o-ring if you end up with any leaking it's because this o-ring here has failed um, and what you'll find is when you go to replace this a lot of times the brass fitting will have kind of seized or welded on here if you will so display uh, spray some um, so pull this you can pull you can pull this all the way back there's a rubber a little stopper here so you can take this rubber stopper piece here that keeps the end from sliding too far down so people freak out and they see leaks they're like 
oh, this O-ring must have fallen out. No, 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 no. This is just to hold. This is just to hold this piece again. This is older or new ones. The, all the ones you guys have. This this end piece looks different. Um, but if you have a leak from this area, it's because this green O-ring has been pinched. I don't know how it's possible. This is an eight-year-old O-ring with no issues. Um, I don't know how you guys managed to mess it up, but um, you may want to have an extra one of these laying around. And so you want to buy, this was the prototype, but you want to buy the T304 stainless Mosmatic. This is a 14 millimeter, uh, but to get this off, you're going to have to rubber mallet hammer on this and try to get this to break loose uh, because of the brass fitting you probably had on there for the last few years, you know, just from corrosion from your water will rust onto there. And so you'll have to try to get a screwdriver in there and try to bang on this and put some channel locks on the end of the hose here and try to try to get this to jar or break loose. Um, but look at them nice and clean. This is a, you know, a $50 upgrade to your Krenzla. I would highly, highly suggest that you do that. Order one of these, we have them in stock. So order one of these, maybe a new green O-ring and uh, bang off your old twist and seal. Put this new stainless that I've had this built specifically for this application, really freaking cool. All right, let me go plug this thing in, fire it up and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so let's just make sure it works. It's a moment of truth if we're uh, wrapping this video up or if I've got to tear it all back apart again. OG spec, 4.0 nozzle. Um, so you can see how freaking clean that is there. This is many years to get it down to this. In the beginning, I had a, a swivel and all these parts and pieces. You look, go back and look at some of my old blogs uh, on jur journal posts on, uh, on Renless. This is a 12 foot inlet hose. I like to do the brass fittings on the on the garden hose. Uh oh. All right, this is how you know something's not right when there's leaking at the bottom. Shoot. Oh, is it leaking from my hose? Yeah, it's definitely leaking out the bottom. I don't think I tightened these bottom bolts properly. This is part of the deal. Figuring this stuff out. So what will happen is this will cause it to surge because we have a leak right here on our fitting, on our brass fitting. I bet you that O-ring is just beat up and old. So there's a garden hose O-ring in here. Usually doesn't need to be all that tight. Just kind of got tight over time. need. May need to replace that O-ring. There we go. That's all we needed. Crisis averted. All right. Now let's see if it works. Ha ha. I think we're good. Speaking of O-ring, this is part of the game here, folks. Dealing with, see, that's the exact example when you have an O-ring failure. Since I messed with that, that O-ring probably tore when I put it back in. I'm reading about 1300 PSI, so what I'll probably want to do is go in and adjust my unloader, because it should be reading 1400. Oh, there we go. It airs out, 1400 on the dot. Beautiful. So I'm going to release the pressure from this, grab a green O-ring, and replace that right here. That'll solve our leaking right here. I kind of figured that might need to be done. It's not torn, but it's, you know, it's eight years old, and when I started messing with that, See, if you take this fitting off and on all the time, that's when you're going to end up with issues. Let's see if a quarter inch O-ring works here. You got those spare Krenzel hoses over there. Oh yeah. So I'm putting a quarter inch quick disconnect O-ring on there to see if that works.
fixed. Ah, dang, this thing's so good. All right, that's a wrap, people. Really good. Yeah. All right, so we'll have a listing of all the products. These will all be available in the store. I have them in stock. Um, we'll, we should have them up by the time you're watching this video. Uh, seal kit, unloader valve replacement if you need that, a new gauge, uh, and then the check valve kit. You can see there shouldn't be anything you need to do with the wobble plate. Uh, we also have the Krenza gear oil, so you would need that as well. But that's a you know, DIY, my first time doing it in eight years of owning this machine. And uh, we're essentially back to fresh, factory fresh. Uh, ready to operate for the next you know 20 years that's the beauty of one of these machines but i've had this on my list for a really long time to do i had to gather all the parts and pieces and get some stock of that um, and you kind of see all the major things that you would need to replace if necessary we'll have all that stuff available in the krenzel section of the store so Thanks for all your support for all of you, for all of you who have bought this machine. Uh, those of you who are watching this have bought it from somewhere else. Don't do that again. Buy it from me. I know what the heck I'm talking about. So anyway, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, uh, watching this video. But anyway, I'll be doing a K1322 soon, which will be the same procedure. Uh, troubleshooting a problem with that one not turning off, and then I have my old big 20 millimeter pump, my K165STS, um, that will be. Um, it's leaking out the bottom because it needs a new seal kit. So I'll be, uh, I'll be dealing with that one here soon as well. So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I'll be uh, continuing to update you on maintenance and how to take care of these machines as they age for you. Catch you soon.